Welcome to Stingers, discussions with fellow SAUBs over everyone's favorite energy drink. I'm Allison Sotos, and I'm joined today by Dr. Terry Schweitzer, Director and Professor of Art History and Museum Studies here at SAU. Thank you for being here. You're welcome. So have you ever tried a Stinger before? I have not. Okay. <laughs> How's that going to go? Uh, I'm a little leery of it. Yeah. Um, the color is a little disturbing, <laughs> but yeah. I'll give it a shot. Which one do you think is going to be your favorite? Just kind of like looking at it. I have no idea. <laughs> okay. It looks like a lot of food coloring. It does, yes. <laughs> okay, so what first brought you to St. Ambrose? I was at a conference, um, a College Art Association conference back in, I think, 2002, uh, and I was doing a presentation on teaching art history to freshmen. Uh, at the time, I was uh, talking about a class I had created at Millican University, but at the point that I was at the conference, I was actually a museum director. Uh, and so I wasn't really looking for a job. And I went to uh, an alumni event at the conference for Indiana University. Uh, and I happened to be in line right behind uh, one of the art faculty here, who was also a graduate of Indiana. Um, and so she jokingly said, you should come teach her us. And, and one thing led to another, and I ended up deciding to come for an interview. Uh, I loved all of the people that I met in the art department, but I was particularly impressed by President Rogowski. Uh, and so completely unexpectedly, I ended up leaving my museum job and coming here instead. Nice. So we're first going to try the green one. Okay. I've actually never had any of these before either. Well, so. that doesn't make me concerned <laughs> at all. <laughs> what do you think okay. about that one? I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, that one's interesting. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so tell me about your college experience and what sent you down the path of art history. Okay, so undergraduate. Um, I didn't know what I wanted to be when I grew up. Okay. Uh, I went through 13 majors. Um, I managed to collect three of them. Uh, I was economics, international studies, and French with a minor in Russian. And I went to Butler University, go Bulldogs. Uh, and I um, was going to work for the State Department. I went overseas to Russia to get my last Russian credit. Um, and I ended up falling in love with art history while I was over there. Uh, it was a world I hadn't really explored before at all. Uh, and so I kind of had a little bit of an academic double take. I was like, maybe I don't want to be an economist after all. I was in Hungary for a bit. Uh, I stayed overseas for about three years. Uh, and then I decided I was going to come back and do art history for grad school. Um, I was very naive about uh, grad school. I thought I would get in, and I did get in, fortunately. I realize now that most people apply for more than one grad program. Um, but I went to Indiana. Uh, I ended up getting a master's in art history uh, with a focus on nationalism in Eastern Europe and Russia. Um, and then I also got the master's in arts administration, followed by the PhD in art history. Very cool. Mm -hmm. All right, we're going to try the red one now. Okay. You have to let me know if you like this one better or not. It honestly tastes just the same. I know. I, was gonna say, I, was I like, think it's mm -hmm. the food coloring. <laughs> I kind of like the green one better, I think. They taste the same to you? Same to me. Yeah. Same to me. <laughs> so you had said you spent time abroad. Uh -huh. um, how did that shape who you are today? Uh, it changed everything. Um, when I went over to Russia, I had every intention of working for the State Department. Um, I had worked for uh, the federal government before I went overseas. Um, and so I thought that was the track I was going to be on. I planned on doing something in maybe the diplomatic corps, uh, working for the embassy in, um, in Russia. Um, and when I was forced to kind of reassess what I really wanted to do and the fact that econ really wasn't my bliss, um, I ended up um, looking for something other than economics. Uh, and so I started studying uh, art first in Russia, then I went to the south of Hungary. Uh, and in Hungary, uh, I taught English at a university down in a town called Pech, which was about 40 miles north of the border with uh, former Yugoslavia. Okay. And that was the same time that the war was going on uh, in that area. Um, I also started studying art uh, at that school as well. Uh, it kind of started out, um, there was an art professor who wanted to learn English, English uh, and I wanted to learn Hungarian, and so I started sitting in on his drawing class to learn Hungarian, uh, and ended up learning uh, uh, Hungarian and art along the way. At one point, I knew all of the bones in the body uh, in Hungarian, but I did not know them in English. 
Very so, cool. Yeah, and, and then, you know, that really, that overseas experience completely changed how I thought about art. Um, you know, I was a country kid. You didn't do art if you were like um, a serious academic student. Mm -hmm. um, and I realized when I was in Europe that that didn't have to be the case. Nice, very cool. Mm -hmm. All right, so we're gonna try the purple one. Now. Okay. I bet it's gonna be just the same. <laughs> I'm sorry, it tastes just the same. It, that one tastes so different. <laughs> what do you mean? No, that Maybe one it's totally like old different. lady taste buds. Like your taste know. buds go bad when your eyes go bad. I'm not sure. I think I like this one. This is still my favorite right now. Yeah, they do all taste the same. Do you have a favorite? Yeah. Not yet. No? Okay, well, we'll see what the yellow one can taste. I'm going to stick with my black coffee. Yeah, okay. <laughs> all right, so with art history as a background, uh -huh. are you an artist yourself? I am not. No? I just talk about other people's art. Very cool, very cool. <laughs> Is there anything that you've learned through the mm -hmm. other art that's made you want to like mm -hmm. try art yourself or have you? Uh, I've thought about it. I've thought about trying painting. I've thought about trying printmaking, um, but I know what I'm good at and I know what I'm not good at. Uh, and I prefer to be a cheerleader for my students who are in the art department rather than embarrassing myself. <laughs> Maybe, yeah. maybe when I retire, maybe at that point, I'll, you know, be one of those little old ladies that tries to learn oil painting at like 70. Um, but at this point, no. <laughs> Very cool. All right, so we're going to try the last one. Okay. Yeah, just the same. I don't, I don't <laughs> like that one. It's like sour. Yeah, they all taste the same to me. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so what is your favorite part about being a professor here at St. Ambrose? My favorite part. So um, many years ago, uh, I tried coaching. Um, I loved coaching because you could help students realize that they could be more than they thought they could be. Um, and that's the same thing that I love about teaching. Um, and I never planned on being a teacher. In fact, that probably would have been the very last thing when I was 18. If you'd asked me what I was going to do, I probably would have said I'm never going to teach. Um, but I really love helping students figure out who they want to be when they grow up and helping them realize that they can do so much more than they may initially realize. That's my favorite thing. Nice. And then what's a fun fact about you that many students may not know? Um, so I was thinking about this question because I wasn't quite sure what to say. Um, I think most students know that I, um, that I was an athlete for many years um, and that I did some of that overseas. Um, I think a lot of students don't realize that I'm actually a black belt. So there's You're a black belt? I'm a black belt. That's very cool. <laughs> All right, and then finally behind us, what uh -huh. is going on? This is the Museum Enthusiast Club annual art auction. Um, this is day one of the event, um, and it gives an opportunity for students to bid on art that's affordable for them, um, also faculty and staff. Um, we have a wide range of art, uh, art donated by students, faculty, staff, um, some reproduction pieces, some original pieces, um, and the artwork that is sold through this event and through the second day of it at SA Unite at the Figgy, that income pays for our activities throughout the year. So we always take outings to museums throughout the year, uh, and then we always have one big outing in the spring semester, and we like to try to make it as affordable as possible for all Ambrose students. Um, and so if we can make like two to 3,000 with this event, it allows us to offer up seats on the bus uh, for our spring trip to everybody uh, for anywhere from like 20 to $30. Uh, and that includes the transportation, admission fee, everything like that. So that's part of why um, this is so important. The second day of the event, SA United the Figgy, is a way for us to remind um, the Figgy that we have an institutional membership and that we are important to them. It's also a chance for um, us to remind the campus community that we have an institutional membership at the Figgy, uh, which is um, a real benefit for our students. It allows them to get in free whenever they want uh, with their student ID. Uh, and so it's really kind of a, a two-part um, uh, two purpose. First of all, to remind them that we, uh, we exist and we're important, and uh, to remind the campus community Community that the figgy is also important. Very nice. Mm -hmm. So, do you have any new opinions on the singers? I'm gonna stick with coffee. Stick with coffee? Yes. All right, sounds good. <laughs> thanks again for being here and thanks Thank for you. watching.